Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ibrahim. I've been using the Apple Watch Ultra since its release last year. Before that, I had the stainless steel Series 7 and I've been using the stainless steel models for quite some time, I believe from the Series 4 and just wanted a change from that model. In the box, there is a booklet which shows the types of bands you can purchase with this watch and some instructions and the features of this watch. And then you have the Apple Watch Ultra in the titanium casing with the Apple Watch magnetic charger to USB-C cable. I also went with the Ocean Band and it has a titanium buckle. The naming of the watch is quite interesting. Apple chose to go with Ultra rather than Pro, like some of the other lineups like AirPods, iPads and iPhones. And this made me wonder that this product may be for a certain category of people. Apple pitched the Watch Ultra for extreme rugged sports designed for endurance athletes, outdoor adventures and ocean explorers. As most of us are not involved in such activities and sports, the Apple Watch Ultra may not be as useful with the features it comes with. The Apple Watch Ultra is 49 millimeters with a titanium casing along with a larger digital crown and the side button raised on the case. It's rated IPX dust resistance and water resistance up to 100 meters. It has a max brightness of 2000 nits, which has the same max brightness of the iPhone 14 Pro. The digital crown has a larger diameter and the cursor grooves which I have found make it easier to use. On the wayfinder face, rotating the digital crown activates night mode or better viewing in low light situations. My initial reaction to the 49mm case was mixed. Coming from the Series 7 which is 45mm, uh, I wasn't sure whether the Ultra would be too big and having small to medium sized wrist. I would say the Apple Watch Ultra isn't too big, but also it's not small. When I'm not wearing the Apple Watch Ultra, I do like wearing chronograph and Tacmia watches. I am used to wearing different size watches. Everyone has different size wrists and there's no ideal wrist size for the watch. And it's really down to your personal preference. Best to try out the Apple Watch Ultra in your local Apple store before purchasing. The Apple Watch Ultra features a action button which is in international orange. It's customizable to marking compass waypoint, controller workout and more. The Wayfinder watch face which is only available for the Apple Watch Ultra is one of my favorite Apple Watch faces. There are a few different options when it comes to the straps. I went with the ocean band not because I love to go swimming in the ocean I just like how functional the strap looks. It's molded from a type of rubber which makes it lightweight and flexible. It has a titanium buckle and a spring-loaded titanium adjustable loop that secures through the tube for a hyper-secure fit. I do have different bands that I use. I have the, the leather loop which was one of my favourite and I like how it was simple and very easily would attach. And I have the stainless steel loop in, uh, I think this is in space black. And this one was in midnight. Um, I did try using the leather loop on the Apple Watch Ultra. I would say it did fit nicely onto the watch and I didn't have any issues with putting on the leather loop. One of the best features of the Apple Watch Ultra is the battery life. I found that the watch gives me around two to three days of usage. Now coming from the Series 7 where I had to charge really much every day, I think the battery on the Apple Watch is quite significant. Now, Apple state on their website that the, on a full charge the Apple Watch Ultra can give up to 36 hours, so which is very significant. I found that cellular connectivity can drain your battery a bit. Previously, when I had the Series 7 and the Series 6 on cellular, I would experience quite significant battery drainage. And with the Apple Watch Ultra, I don't use the cellular connectivity. And because I have my iPhone with me at all times, especially when I'm wearing the watch, my cellular connectivity is off. And I found that I do get a bit more juice from the battery. I found that having a bigger display is definitely beneficial. Coming from the 45mm, I think you get a bit more real estate of screen, which is 
uh, really good, uh, especially with the complications and data you can have on the screen itself. Another feature that I think is a plus on the Ultra is the action button. Uh, whenever I want to start a workout, tapping it once and then tapping it again to start the workout. And lastly, the battery. I think having two to three days of battery juice on the watch, I think is quite significant. Um, coming from the Series 7 where I'm charging every day and some days I wouldn't even make it to the end of the day. The price of the Apple Watch Ultra is $800 and in the UK it's £849. And this is not far off from the price of a iPhone 14 Pro. The main question is, does the features of the watch justify the purchase? Now, unless you're a tech or Apple enthusiast, for most people, I don't think the watch will be useful from a price standpoint. I found that the Series 7 for day-to-day -day usage was more than perfect. And a lot of the features, I would say, is geared towards endurance athletes. And for the average day-to-day -day task, the Series 7 or the Series 8, if you have one, I think would suffice. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Like, comment and subscribe and thanks for watching.